All right, so this is going to be an industrial design sketch demo. We're gonna start with the basics and then we're gonna combine those basic principles to make some cool sketch. Now, I wanted to put this design sketching overview in one video so that you guys can reference it. There's a whole bunch of really great resources on YouTube. You just search industrial design sketching, but it's kind of scattered all throughout the internet. So this is sort of the one-stop shop here. The last thing I wanna mention is that I'm using digital sketching in Procreate on my iPad. I actually much prefer analog sketching with pen and paper, but it's just easier to record. The good news is that whether you're sketching by hand or whether you're using an iPad or a Wacom tablet or anything else, all the same principles will apply no matter what. Okay, so the first part of this is around construction and perspective. I simply cannot stress enough how important perspective is and constructing your objects properly is. And here's why. Basically, if you're an industrial designer, you're essentially creating three-dimensional physical objects. Eventually, the thing that you're sketching is going to manifest itself physically. And the best way to represent three-dimensional objects on two-dimensional flat paper is through using really, really good perspective. You really wanna make sure that your proportions are right. What we have here are some vanishing points. And if you look at the top drawing, everything is sort of nicely organized. And you can see that there's no real distortion happening with this sketch. Everything is sort of nice and clean. If you look at the bottom one, however, you'll notice that it's getting really, really pointed at that bottom edge down there. It's actually less than 90 degrees, which makes no sense if it's a 90 degree angle of the actual object itself. So the reason for that is that the vanishing points are too close together. That's what's causing that distortion. You ideally wanna put your vanishing points off past the edge of the page. Now you don't wanna to go too crazy with that because if you go way, way off the edge of the page, the lines are gonna to be too parallel and that's gonna look fake and weird too. So this is sort of a good middle ground where the lines are converging, uh, but it's not so distorted that it looks fake or weird or just kind of visibly jarring. So what I'm doing here is I'm drawing X's through each plane, and that's actually telling me where the center points are for each of these faces. More specifically, what's happening is, you know, I draw that X and then I draw the line that is vertical, vertically, and then the next one I draw it going back in perspective for the sidelines, and now I know where the exact center of my face is if I want to sort of position anything. This is really, really important for a lot of different sketching. So it's important to know how to do this. So you basically just draw an X and that will basically mark the center point of your sketch. Now what I'm doing here is I'm basically cutting out various parts of the sketch. And that's why it's so important to draw the back of the sketch. You basically want to draw through as if, you know, the thing that you're drawing is made out of glass, at least at first. The reason why this is important is because if you decide to sort of, you know, integrate these other features, it's easier to sort of plot out where everything needs to go if you do it this way. And as you can see here, I'm sort of cutting out certain areas of this cube. All of the lines are always going towards the vanishing points for these features. The only lines not going towards the vanishing points are obviously the vertical lines, but that's probably self-explanatory. And the same thing applies for these uh, shapes that are sort of protruding outward, right? Everything is going towards the vanishing points, and I'm using those center lines as a point of reference as well. Okay, notice how I still drew through there. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding some line weight here. I'm adding some line weight to basically add thickness and darkness to the areas that are the actual sketch, okay? So I'm keeping those light construction lines there because it gives the viewer a frame of reference and it helps them understand what the shape is doing more easily without going into a lot of like shading and value and stuff. And I'm also drawing what are called contour lines. And these contour lines basically help to give even more definition to the shape with minimal effort. I tend to put contour lines through the center of the object, but not always. Sometimes I'll just have it go up through an important feature so that you can see how the surface is sort of bending or, or tilting or turning inward or whatever else. By the way, if you're not subscribed, you should totally subscribe. It helps me out, helps the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, I'll be providing the camera sketch Procreate file in the description. If you wanna check it out, check out the link. That will basically show you exactly how I built it. You'll be able to see all the layers and every single little construction. So that's in the description. What I'm doing here is I'm essentially doing the same thing that I did before, where I was 
you know, I started with a square or a cube and I gradually started adding features to it and taking away features. And that's all this is right now. I'm drawing a digital SLR. The proportions aren't quite right, but you know, I'm drawing from memory here and that's all right. So what I have here is a protruding segment for the actual handle. I have a protruding segment for the flash. And then of course the lens itself is another protruding cylinder, okay? Now, what I can do from here is I can start to work out and construct some of these details in greater depth. And once again, this isn't really proportionally correct. I'm drawing this from memory and that's okay. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's more just an exercise to show you how you can combine a lot of primitive shapes to eventually sort of construct an actual sketch or a design, okay? And this is basically all you're doing. And now what I'm doing is I'm just adding in some basic line weight so that you can more easily differentiate between you know, the various shapes in the design and more on line weight later. But for now, I wanna focus on something else. If you're designing something that is sort of a standardized shape, it's okay to use an underlay of, you know, an existing product. You know, don't do this if you're obviously designing something that is completely new. But, you know, if you have a digital SLR camera and you're being asked to design the next generation, a lot of the proportions are already worked out for you. A lot of the ergonomics are already worked out and you may not need to start from scratch. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm actually using this photograph of a camera as a reference point and it's okay to use this. Now, I'm not tracing it exactly, you'll notice. I'm actually just sort of using it as a guideline for general proportions. Once again, I'm not tracing, I'm just using it as a general guideline, okay? That way I can focus on designing it rather than worrying about, you know, are the proportions right? You know, is this in perspective? All that kind of stuff. Obviously, if you're doing a sketching class, you don't wanna do this, don't cheat on your homework. But if you're just designing something and you need to draw something quickly and you don't feel like figuring out the proportions on your own, this is a nice, you know, sort of quick fix. Only do this if you have the proportions worked out already. So once again, we have two sketches here. The first one used a reference. The second one was just drawn from memory and you can see a pretty big difference. Obviously the one on the left is a lot more resolved. Before we get into the rest of the demo, I wanna talk about something quickly and it's about drawing straight lines. So for me personally, I'm able to draw a straight line from one particular dimension and that's roughly a 30 degree angle. So I'll tilt my paper and draw my line like that, okay? If I try and go straight across, it's just not as straight for me. So figure out what works with your you know, personal physiology. Another thing that's important is you don't wanna draw your lines too slow like this because they'll end up wobbly and weird and just kind of crappy looking. And you also don't wanna draw like quick little tiny scratchy lines either because that's no good either. You wanna draw a nice, quick, crisp, fast line like these. One byproduct of this is that you get a really nice variance in line weight where there are these little tails at the end of each of the lines, which I think it helps to sort of elevate it quite a bit. See those tails, nice tail at the beginning of the line, or I'm sorry, the end of the line and the beginning as well. So I think that's really, really important to point out because it makes your sketch seem a lot more alive, a lot more lively, a lot more interesting to look at. The best way to achieve this is to draw quickly and draw from your shoulder. So it's more of like a shoulder and elbow motion. You're not really turning your wrist at all. Your wrist stays pretty straight and stiff. Anyway, continuing on to the rest of the demo here, I wanted to talk a little bit about a one, two, three value system. And that's what I'm showing here. So basically what this means is in these instances, the light is actually coming from the top left, from above and left. And this is how you would shade each of these primitives. Now, once again, this is where the light source is coming from. Obviously, if the light source is coming from the top left, then the top of the object is going to be your lightest value, a one. The side of the object that's facing the left side, because the light is coming from the left, is gonna be your two or your second value. And then the third side is basically going to be, you know, your darkest side. That's where the shadow is going to be. One thing that's important to do is squint your eyes and see if you're able to distinguish easily between the three different sides here. Make sure that you, there's enough of a difference between the one, the two, and the three. If you squint and it all kind of blends together, you need to add more contrast between them. Maybe make the three darker or the two lighter or the one lighter or whatever else. 
And this also applies to line weight as well. So let me talk about that. So if the light source is coming once again from the top left, I know that you know the bottom of the object is going to have a darker line. So basically any area that's in shadow is going to have darker, thicker lines. And any area that's exposed to light is going to have lighter, thinner, wispier lines. So obviously the base of the object that is facing away from the light source is gonna be super dark. And that's where I started. And I'm doing a little bit of sketching here at the bottom of the lens, especially is gonna be dark because that's gonna be definitely in shadow. It's facing away from the light source. Um, underneath the actual uh, flash is going to be really dark. That's gonna be another area. Another thing is sort of picking a focal point. So what I mean by that is, okay, what area of the sketch do I want people to look at? And the best way to do that is to have that be the darkest part of the sketch with your line weights, okay? Very important. Now, in terms of shading your sketch or adding value to it, one thing that you can do is divide this, this up into you know separate pieces. Like, okay, what are the one, two, three values? So if we look, I started with the flash here and the flash, the top of it is a one. The side of it is more of a 1.5 because it's sort of facing upward just a little bit. And then the side facing away from the light is a three. That's the darkest. And you can actually sort of separate your sketch up into different primitives and planes to basically figure out how dark or light you need to shade something. Now at this stage, the sketch is pretty much finished. You can present this to an in-house design team and get feedback on it, which is really the only point of any sketch. If you want, you can add a little bit of value. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some darkness or shading to the darkest parts of the sketch, the twos and the threes. It just helps it read a little bit better and it's just a little bit easier to understand what the surfaces are doing. Now, if you want, you can go further with this sketch and it's really up to you in the situation. I personally wouldn't present this kind of a sketch to a client because they have a little bit of trouble reading it. I might show them something a little bit higher fidelity because it's easier for them to understand, especially if they're not a designer. But it really just depends on your personal workflow. Now, right now what I'm doing is I'm just using a big fat brush to sort of get a nice smooth gradation for all of these pieces. And I'm just sort of erasing as I go and putting everything on separate layers. And you know, this lens is looking you know pretty decent you know, adding in my reflections, working on stuff like that, starting to look pretty good. And I can continue to do this with the rest of the sketch, adding in highlights, using my actual lens itself. So I actually took the lens from that photograph that I was using, and I actually put it into the sketch and lowered the opacity. This immediately adds a lot of realism to your sketch, and anytime you can do this, I would advise that you do it. Obviously, you know, you can't do this if you're doing a completely new design. You can do it if it's sort of an evolution of an existing design, like a digital SLR camera in this case. And I'm just sort of slowly going through this process of darkening things. I'm using my one, two, three uh, values as a guide for how this is gonna work. I'm doing a nice little cast shadow underneath the flash onto the lens. I'm starting to add the rest of this uh, shading into the rest of the design. And I'm always following that one, two, three sort of guide here. This handle right here is essentially a cylinder. So if you look to the right, that's basically how I'm going to shade it. And you know, this is slowly starting to come along. So anyway, that concludes this sketching demo. I wanted to do it quickly. It's really for my students more than anything else. Um, but I figured I might as well post it on YouTube because maybe somebody could benefit from it. Um, once again, I will link Spencer Nugent's Sketching Basics playlist in the description. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. It kind of covers the basics, but I did this video because it's sort of a good basic, you know, quick, you know, 10, 15 minute overview. And I think it's really effective for that. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please leave a like, please subscribe, leave a comment if you want to see more content like this. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about it. I do have some technical skill demos, but I like to focus more on the theory of design and how to apply that theory practically rather than the technical skills. But you know, maybe every once in a while, I'll do some more videos like this. So once again, guys, thank you for checking it out. I appreciate it and have a great day.